Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome to the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Whether it is your first time here or your last time here or somewhere in between, I appreciate that you're here right now. And today we will be discussing the tragic passing of Adam Johnson, former NHLer, former Pittsburgh Penguin. Adam Johnson was playing over in England in the Elite Ice Hockey League for the Nottingham Panthers. And in a game on Friday, an errant skate caught him in the neck and he tragically passed away on Saturday morning. It, the team called it a freak accident, and they issued this statement upon his passing. The Nottingham Panthers are truly devastated to announce that Adam Johnson has tragically passed away following a freak accident at the game in Sheffield last night. The Panthers would like to send our thoughts and condolences to Adam's family, his partner, and all his friends at this extremely difficult time. Everyone at the club, including players, staff, management, and ownership, are heartbroken at the news of Adam's passing. Our thoughts are also with the fans and staff of both clubs, especially those who attended or were following the game, who will be devastated following today's news. The Panthers would like to thank everyone who rushed to support Adam last night in the most testing of circumstances. Adam, our number 47, was not only an outstanding ice hockey player, but also a great teammate and an incredible person with his whole life ahead of him. The club will dearly miss him and will never, ever forget him. We ask that the privacy of Adam's family and friends and everyone at the club is respected at this difficult time as we all seek to come to terms with our grief. Rest in peace, Adam. And I'd like to echo those sentiments and just send my condolences to his friends and family and all the fans of the team who were affected and everyone who knew Adam Johnson. And the tributes have been pouring in across the hockey world. He was a very beloved individual. And Michael Russo in The Athletic is one I want to shout out in particular. I'm going to leave a link in the description to his article in The Athletic there where he spoke to a lot of people who attended the University of Minnesota Duluth with Adam and they could only say positive things. Based on all the stories, he was such a spark in so many communities that he was in. And what I want to talk about today is something that could have possibly saved Adam's life, and that's net guards. It's, it's a piece of hockey equipment that's been around for decades. It is not mandatory to wear a net guard in many higher levels of hockey. A lot of junior levels of hockey do mandate net guards, which is a fabulous first step, but there are many higher levels of hockey, including the NHL, where it would be the most effective to have the rule. And that's kind of the end of the story and the beginning and the middle and the end is that it should be mandated just as we got to a point where helmets were mandated for, let's start with goalies, and then helmets were mandated for players and visors are now mandated. In 2013, they brought in a rule where you have to wear a visor because we don't want you losing an eyeball from a puck. And now we've reached the point where there's enough of these incidents where we need to just add a layer of protection. And a lot of these incidents, we look at them, we say, okay, they're one-offs. You know, what happened? to Adam. It's, it's a freak accident, and it is, but getting cut on the ice at these high levels of speed of the game, and even at the lower levels, is not uncommon at all. And even in the last few years of the NHL, we've seen many of these incidents. And I feel like it's important we talk about how often this is happening in the at the NHL level, because it's not like these are one-offs. We can't say, hey, once a decade, someone gets cut with a skate. It's Multiple times a season, players are missing massive amounts of games because they are not protected. And let's let's just let's talk about a few of them right now. Morgan Barron is probably the most well known example as that happened in game one of the playoffs. And Morgan Barron didn't miss a game after getting cut across the face from a skate from a Vegas Golden Knight player. And he got 75 stitches. And if that skates in a couple inches in a different direction. It's a, it's a tragic event for, for Baron, and he went back out there. And a lot of this equipment discussion that I think we should all start having so that Adam Johnson's death isn't in vain is so that we can protect hockey players from themselves. I think we need to use this incident as an agent for change because we know that if we give them the option to not wear the equipment, they won't do it. It's a matter of protecting people from themselves because there will always be the argument that it's uncomfortable or they're just not used to it. But if it's mandatory, they don't have a choice and those excuses can't 
be given. Tyler Sagan in March of last year was cut on his Achilles tendon by a skate from Jordan Greenway of the Buffalo Sabres at the time. And and Tyler Sagan didn't end up missing months at a time, but he missed a couple weeks uh, last season. And th- that happened in March of last season. And once again, after that, there was a whole bunch of discussion on how to protect players and nothing came of it because we're sitting here at this point where no new rules have been made. Evander Kane last season was cut on the wrist. He was out for a significant amount of time because that cut on the wrist required major surgery on that wrist that kept him kept him out. And Evander Kane now has been an advocate for wrist protection, which goes into the net guard discussion is that it's easy equipment that these players can wear and it's it'll save you. It could possibly save your life and it can save you months of your hockey career just by wearing the simple equipment. Alec Martinez in 2021 was cut across the face and missed 53 games. He had a whole bunch of stitches in his face and he had a a nasty scar across his face after he was falling and then Brandon Duhame's skate came up and cut him on the face and that was an awful one. That was two years ago, but he missed uh, more than half of an NHL season for something as simple as like the NHL had full cages mandatory. Like that cut to Alec... Martinez doesn't happen and there's equipment out there that can protect NHL players from themselves and that includes net guards and and it's not just NHL players I'll, I'll take it to junior hockey where 16 year old Teddy Balkin passed away in January of 2022 when similar to Adam Johnson an errant skate in a freak accident caught him on the neck and he passed away uh, shortly after that USA hockey does not require its players to wear neck guards and It's a complete oversight because you can save lives with this simple equipment. And there's a lot of great work being done in this field as well in collaboration with several NHL players. There's a great company out there called AEGIS Impact Protection. Aegis, I guess, is how you say that. And they're doing like the next step because there's like manufacturers, they they have the net guards that are kind of like that soft foamy thing that'll protect you. And like it's a great layer of defense, but this company is doing the deeper work where they're getting their manufacturing equipment for your wrists and your neck and kind of like your shoulder blades as well. They have a full garb that'll go over that whole area and it'll help guard against the slashes, the ones that cause these major cuts and and i recommend everybody to go check them out that's it's in the description below but the main point is this needs to come from the top this needs to come from the nhl downwards for it to filter down to minor hockey obviously like you can start all this stuff in the minors and i think every they should get these rules in there as well but the onus needs to be on the nhl at some point to be on the forefront of something and i think if the nhl and the nhl pa can advocate for change even if it's like slow change i would just like to see some sort of change to protect hockey players so that every hockey player who's out there enjoying this spectacular sport can continue enjoying it and can worry less about these freak accidents and the providence bruins players went out on Sunday and it was noticeable the amount of players who wore neck guards after what happened to Adam on Saturday. And I, and I love seeing that because there are ways to protect yourself. And I think everybody should, I don't think there's a reason that anybody who's in any level of hockey shouldn't wear a full cage. Like I get if you're in the NHL and you're wearing a visor, like I sort of get it. Even if like I was an NHL player, I'd probably throw in a full cage. I don't know. But like, if you're just playing rec league and you're not wearing a cage and you're just like risking a puck hit in your face when you just got a job in the morning, that's so you got to take care of yourself so you can continue living a great life and playing the game of hockey. Everybody who plays hockey loves hockey. It's one of the greatest sports on planet earth. And like with helmets, how at one point it was ridiculous for people to wear helmets while playing hockey Goalies didn't wear masks until halfway through the last century. Players didn't wear visors and they weren't mandated until 2013. I think it's entirely reasonable that we can reach some point and we can let Adam Johnson's death be a jumping off point for us to have some change in the league and have wrists protected and have necks protected so we see less incidents like this. And that's that's all I want to say today. I think... It's it's such a tragedy. Like I can't 
I can't harp on that enough. And I hope that this death leads to just protecting hockey players. So these incidents are even more few and far between. That is it. That is it for me today. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here watching or listening to this podcast. And I appreciate you for that. I will be back on Thursday evening. I will see you then. Good night from Toronto. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.